This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. You may not be able to see the provisions of God, but it's there. You may not be able to see the angels getting ready to help you, but it's there. You may not be able to see the plan of the Holy Spirit right now, but it's there. You may not see what God has already planned for you, things that are good, things that'll work out for your good, but it is there. Those things you can't see are eternal. You have eternal things working for you in the name of Jesus. Everything is gonna be all right. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We need a guard, because out of your heart flows every issue of life. And if your heart is not being guarded with peace, that's impacting the harvest. The harvest, I guarantee you. You go look at your harvestless life, and you will notice you also have a peaceless life. No, it's, it's everything. That's why Jesus said, peace I leave you. Then he said, my peace. Jesus' peace can keep you emotionally stable when you're going through a rough time. That's why it's his peace. Peace that you don't even understand. Why am I not going crazy? Why am I not losing it? Why didn't I blow my brains out? Why? Because Jesus' peace prevents that from happening. Say out loud, I have Jesus' peace. Not the peace that comes from the world. The peace that comes from the world is conditional peace. The conditions need to be right for you to have peace. But Jesus' peace is not based on the conditions. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Look at Psalms chapter 4 and verse 8 in the NLT. Psalms 4 and 8 in the NLT. Uh, Psalms 4 and 8, NLT. He says, in peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Isaiah 26, 3 in NLT, in peace I will lie down and sleep. Somebody says, I need to take a sleeping pill. No, you just need to get in peace. Get in peace. You know you don't sleep good when you're not in peace. Verse 3, you will keep him in perfect peace. All right, how do I get that peace? All who trust in him, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. See, when you're not in peace, your thoughts are fixed on the issue of problems. We've got to practice fixing our thoughts on him. We've got to practice saying, I trust God until it becomes a working reality on the inside of your heart. And then look at 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18 in the message. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 Verse 16 and 18 in the message translation. This is so cool here. He says, so we're not giving up. We're not giving up. 
Say it. I'm, say, I'm not giving up. Don't raise your hands. How many of you ever felt like giving up? Don't raise your hands. That's the first thing I said. Don't raise your hands. So we're not giving up. So House of World Changers, we're declaring this to all of the demons of hell so they can take it back to their boss. We're not giving up. It's, it's been rough. It's been tough. It's been frustrating. It's been anxiety. It's been this. It's been brokenness. It's been abuse. It's been sickness. It's been pain. It's been close to dying. It's been loss of loved ones. Uh, take this to your boss. We're not giving up. We're not giving up. Come on, somebody say it. I'm not giving up. Koshata. I'm not giving up. Mm. I know you felt like it. I know you even said it. I know you even planned it. We're not giving up. Whew. You know what that does to your guardian angels? Yeah. You know what that does to your soul? It's refreshing to adhere to your spirit that says weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. I'm not giving up. I'm going to just go to bed. I'm going to show you something about that going to bed in a minute. Some of y'all might go home and go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us. Even though on the outside, it looks like it's falling apart. On the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. That his grace is, has been enveloped, ready to unfold right when you, not a day goes by when the unfolding grace of God is not made available to you. He says, these hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. It's like small potatoes. So you might as well go and make a potato salad, bro. There's a far more, there's far more here than meets the eye. There's a bigger reason why you're going through what you're going through. There's a bigger reason why you were hurting the way you were hurting. There's a bigger reason why you couldn't sleep for the last three nights. There's a bigger reason why you've been dealing what you've been dealing with. There's a bigger reason more than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. You may not be able to see the provisions of God, but it's there. You may not be able to see the angels getting ready to help you, but it's there. You may not be able to see the plan of the Holy Spirit right now, but it's there. You may not see what God has already planned for you, things that are good, things that will work out for your good, but it is there. Those things you can't see are eternal. You have eternal things working for you in the name of Jesus. Everything is going to be all right. We're not going to quit. Let's look at this sleep. Psalms 127, verse 1 through 2 in the King James. Psalms 127. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it because it's going to fall down one day. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late at night to eat the bread of sorrows. Nobody knows <laughs> the trouble I've seen. Remind me of the line on the Wizard of Oz. I'm the king of the forest. 
Uff. <lacht> das ist ein... For so. Now notice what in context he's saying. It's vain for you to, you know, it's vain for you to try to build a house. It's, it's vain for you to rise up early. It's vain for you to sit up late. It's vain for you to sit up and eat the bread of sorrows. For so, for all that, he giveth his beloved, what? So sleep may be God's plan for giving us the help he cannot give us while we awake. Y'all yeah, don't, don't hear me. God is about to do more when you sleep than you are when you awake. It's no longer just sleeping because you're tired. But I see it, but I don't know how to say it unless you tell me how to say it. The, 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 the dream realm somehow can cross the barrier of the spirit realm. And what he couldn't give you while you were fully awake in your natural self, when you dismissed that natural self and went to sleep, he was able to slip something in from the spirit mm, concerning your journey or will of God for your life. That's why the devil wants to fight you so hard and to keep you all distracted up here and to keep you all this stuff so you won't discover that there's a barrier that crosses that spiritual barrier. I'm telling you, God's going to show you some stuff in your sleep. There are witty inventions that you can get when you sleep because you're not, you, you, you ain't in his way. You're going to see some stuff. Mm. You're going to know some stuff that you didn't have in your brain. Do you know how many inventions came forward by people that didn't have no idea what they were doing, but they saw it while they were asleep? You know how many discoveries, how many cures, how many amazing ideas that happened while people were asleep? I'm going to sleep tonight. <laughs> the very answer you need for the problem while you awake can be taken care of when you sleep. And you look at that pillow and you say, when my head hits the pillow, it's going to hit the pillow in peace and my sleep is going to be sweet. Amen. And it's almost when you go to sleep, it's like heaven say, good. Now, <laughs> amen. amen. Now look at this, Mark chapter 4, 35, 38. Mm. Same day when the evening was calm, he saith unto them, let's pass over unto the other side, Jesus said. And and when they had sent away the multitudes, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he, referring to Jesus, was in the back part of the ship, Asleep on a wet pillow. Okay, I'm just assuming it was wet since the water was in the boat, but Jesus was in the back asleep. He was asleep. Why are you worried about the wind and the waves when you got Jesus in your boat? You got him living on the inside of you, walking with you every day, and you're worried about the storms of life 
when Jesus is in your boat. You got to know that while he was asleep, he was controlling everything asleep. Wasn't no more water going to get in there than the boat could have without sinking. And if it was going to sink, they'd have still been all right. He'd allow for them to breathe underwater like a fish. You got Jesus in the boat. Why are you worried about the water and the wind when Jesus is in the boat? Why are you worried about your life when Jesus is in the boat? Why are you worried about how the bills going to be paid when Jesus is in the boat? Why are you worried about your children when Jesus is in the boat? And this is what people do who don't understand the power of Jesus being in the boat. They woke him up. More powerful asleep. They woke him up. Check him out. And they said, Master. Now, it wasn't this pretty when they woke him up because they, they had anxiety now. Because they're tripping out. Dude, he sleeps. Don't he feel all of this? Master. I'm going to kind of say it like college Paul. <laughs> Don't you even care we about to die? <laughs> How did it go there? How are you not questioning his care? Because when you question God's care, fear is going to come in on the inside of you. When you don't trust that God can take care of you, you're scared to give. Because you don't trust he can take care of you. You keep making all these excuses. To, well, I ain't going to give. You see the tie the preacher had on. That ain't it. That ain't none of it. You scared to give because Jesus sleep in the boat and, and you're like, don't you, don't you care about us? Next verse. And he arose and rebuked the wind. Because that was just the issue, it was wind. And said unto the sea, be still. And the wind stopped. And it was a great calm. Now you can think what you want to think, but can you imagine Jesus sleeping? The, the amazing stuff going on while he sleep? And they woke him up. It's kind of like if you were to die and go to heaven and you're just about to hug Jesus and somebody call you back. <laughs> you say, now the Lord going to have to forgive me because I'm going to cuss all y'all out. Cause I ain't paid my rent. Now you done called me back here, and I, I got to figure out where I'm gonna get my. I got to figure out where I'm gonna get the rent money from. I was in the arm of Jesus. <laughs> and there was a great calm. And then the next verse, he said, and he said unto them, Why are you so? Watch this. Fearful. How is it? that you don't have no faith. And the Bible said that they can't enter into that rest because they didn't have faith. They either should have let Jesus alone or went to sleep with him. And that's how we are today. We come to church, we hear this, we get charged up, we're fired up, and then we go home and the storm comes and we, we get full of fear. Because we say we trust him when ain't nothing going on. But when they nailing something to your door and carrying a coffee table out, you have given up on Jesus when he will never give up on you. You have no idea what's about to happen. Maybe you got evicted because he'd been trying to get you into the house of your dreams, but you wouldn't ever move because you were so scared. And so he put you out as an act of mercy and grace, just like he did Adam and Eve. Put them out of the garden so they wouldn't maintain that sin nature for the rest of eternity. 
See, we can talk that religious stuff, which really turns me off. Because there's always the question, do you mean it? Oh, I'm going to enter into the rest. Well, it's easy to rest when there's no storms. But you got to be that kind of person that sleep good when it's raining and thunder and lightning outside. That you didn't even know it because you were sleeping good. That's faith and trust. And he says you need to tremble so that you won't be another generation that fails to enter in because you had no faith. But I'm here to tell you today, child of God, Jesus is in your boat. <laughs> Jesus is in your boat. Well, I hear what you're saying, Reverend, but if I do nothing, then I get nothing. See, that's only true if you're without Christ. But the moment you have Christ in you, the hope of glory, then he goes to work. Listen to this. If you rest, then God will work. But if you work, then God will rest. You got, you got to decide what you're going to do. Because while you're working, he resting. I'm going to rest so he can do the work. In fact, he's already done the work. Can I have two minutes? John 5, 17, King James. John 14, 10, King James. Galatians 2, 20, NLT. And I'm done. John 5, 17, but Jesus answered them, my father worketh, hitherto I work. He's working. John 14, 10, believest thou not that I am in the father and the father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Galatians 2 and 20 in NLT, and as a result of this, that he's working, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Closing statement, I now believe this. I'm not living for God. God is living for me. Do you understand the nature of grace? We must have a grasp on this before we can understand what it means to fall from grace. In the illuminating and powerful four-part series, What It Means to Fall from Grace, Creflo Dollar details how to achieve clear spiritual vision and secure what you've been promised. Grace was given to a fallen world. You cannot know grace if you keep trying to earn what cannot be earned, and grace cannot be earned. To fall from grace means that you fall back into trying to be justified by the law. You fall back into your self-effort. You fall back into depending on your performance. You fall back in depending on your works. For a love gift of 12 U.S. dollars or more, you can receive a digital download today. Call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit www.creflodollarministries.org and click eStore. Don't wait. Uncover grace. As a Christian, what happens after you sin? Do you lose your righteousness? God's gift of righteousness gives us peace with Him, not through our works, but through faith in Jesus' finished work on the cross. Introducing Grace Life Academy. With this easy-to-use platform, you can learn how God's grace covers every sin of the believer and empowers a life of holiness. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access to hundreds of hours of online teachings from Creflo Dollar anywhere and anytime. You can learn in as little as 15 minutes a day with 
with access to interactive Bible lessons that include features like e-courses, study guides, quizzes, and more. Experience God's forgiveness and freedom from the bondage of sin as a new creation in Christ. Join Grace Life Academy. To get started on your 30-day free trial, simply text GLA to 51555 or sign up online by visiting MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. By the grace of God, we feed and clothe people, provide houses, visit hospitals and prisons, and do so, so much more. Every time you make a financial donation to support us, you do these things as well. The tangible relief we provide to God's precious people is only possible because of your faithful support. Thank you for supporting us as we strive to reach a lost and dying world for the Lord Jesus Christ. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CrefloDollarMinistries.org. God bless you. No matter where you are on your personal journey, the Word of God can reach you. Tune into World Changers every Sunday at 10 a.m. or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have you ever had God save somebody in your family and you they, they were no good for nothing dirty, but he saved them anyway, sanctified them, filled them with the Holy Ghost? Text WATCH NOW to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about services and stream times. I open my heart, I open my mind, I open myself up to God possibilities, to God happenings, God encounters, whatever He wants to do, however He wants to do it, but I refuse to live in the past. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are World Changers. See you online. As we wrap up today's broadcast, I'd like to take a moment to pray for you. I don't ever want to take for granted that you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. There's no better way to embark upon a new stage in your life than to enter into a personal relationship with Christ. So if you want to become born again and begin an exciting, intimate relationship with Jesus, pray this prayer with me now. Heavenly Father, come into my heart. Save me. I receive you now by faith. And I declare in Jesus' name that I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.